Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Last weekend I attended my very first Cherry Spring Star Party and I want to share my experience with you all. Cherry Spring Star Party is one of the most famous events in the astronomy community on the east coast of the United States. At Cherry Springs you get to enjoy Bortle 2 dark skies, allowing you to see far more stars than you'd normally spot under more polluted skies. And the views of the Milky Way, of course, they're simply breathtaking. As I mentioned, this was my very first Cherry Spring Star Party and I drove almost 8 hours from Virginia despite the bad weather forecast because I didn't want to miss it out uh, this year after skipping a uh, last year's Star Party. I arrived at the park on Friday and as you approach the gate there is a registration tent where you check in and uh, can buy some merchandise like t-shirts, hoodies, magnets and etc. They also give you some information about the star party and the events that are planned during the event. I parked on the Milky Way Boulevard and began setting up. The sky was partly cloudy with like occasional light showers so I just set up the tent at first. And uh, a little after that, rain stopped and I started setting up my telescopes. On this trip I got three setups, uh, two APO refractors and one Newtonian telescope. The first two APOs, they were ready to imaging right away, I had uh, cable management organized there and all I had to do was just to uh, set up the mount polar line and I was good to go. And the Newtonian telescope, back in the time I didn't reconfigure it after my uh, solar eclipse trip, so I was thinking about finishing uh, this telescope during the Cherry Springs, like working with it on the first night and taking some images on the second night if the weather is good. So on that evening we also had a scare when the power went out on the campsite. Uh, we heard like a blowing sound, probably it was a transformer explosion. Anyway, like people, they started checking their power stations or finding alternatives way to power their rigs. And I heard some people even considered using their Teslas to power the telescopes. But thankfully the power was restored just as the darkness fell. The weather fluctuated throughout the night from really clear skies to complete cloud cover, but I think like 1 or 2 am most people had covered their rigs and a few of us, including me, we stayed up uh, hoping that the skies uh, would clear. And uh, the panoramic picture you see on the screen right now was taken a little after 3.30 in the morning. As you see, persistence paid off and we got some amazing views of the night sky. The transparency improved and I enjoyed looking at the Milky Way through binoculars. My deep sky imaging rigs were also busy capturing data. I've processed the data from only one setup and I will share this image at the end of this video. Uh, by the way, you can also see some red air glow in the shot. After posting it on Instagram, I learned that I had captured an aurora. The next day I spent my time mingling and checking out different setups. It was pretty good to finally meet some people in person and uh, we had some really great conversations. I also met with Ben from the Narrowband channel and uh, we filmed a video discussion of SV Bonnie telescopes. If the video is up on his channel, I will add the link to his video. As the weather forecast predicted clouds and showers for the upcoming night, many people began packing up and I decided to leave as well because I didn't want to pack up early in the morning with rainy conditions. So eventually I headed home on Saturday and arrived there Sunday morning. Talking about the weather, I was told that this time the field had twice less people than you would normally see at Cherry Spring Star Parties. And it's totally understandable that some people don't want to drive uh, hours to get there and get just a couple of like hours of clear skies. But as I said earlier, that was the first Cherry Spring Star Party for me and uh, personally this event was not just about taking good images under dark skies, but the events like this is also a great opportunity to meet people in person. Because like online connections, they're always great, but uh, real-time interactions, they is a total different experience. And you learn so much by checking out different setups, asking questions and basically exchanging ideas with other astrophotographers. So yeah, despite the bad weather forecast, uh, this trip was totally worth it. And to sum up, there was a like, kind of brief video with a story of me attending Cherry Spring Star Party. Although I only spent one night there, I really enjoyed this event and uh, I'm looking forward to coming back to this place later in the future. If you were there at Cherry Springs, let me know in the comment section how your experience was and if you also saw me, say hi in the comment section. Of course guys, thank you so much for watching this video episode. At the end I have a final picture of the Iris Nebula that I captured using an 80mm APO telescope. So as uh, I said, the weather was pretty bad in terms of clouds, but I managed to collect a couple of hours of exposure time and I must say that these two hours under dark skies, they allowed me to reveal pretty good amount of details on the Iris Nebula, so I really hope that uh, you enjoyed this final picture, guys. 
And of course, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, give this video a like so that more people can see it. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the future videos. But until next time, clear skies, guys. Bye.